Did somebody want mac and cheese? Oh, we're making pressure cooker mac and cheese. It's better, faster, and homemade. One tablespoon melted butter. Half a tablespoon olive oil. Half a cup panko. Quarter teaspoon garlic. Pinch of salt. Mix until moistened. 325 degrees. This is our topping. One egg. Half a cup, half and half. Whisk. One and a quarter cup cheddar cheese. Grate your own, it's better. One and a quarter cup Monterey Jack. Or pepper jack. Half a pound cup of toppy. Four cups cold water. Salt. Pressure high, three minutes. Put a towel on it. That way it doesn't make a mess. Drain. Return to the pot. Add the milk egg mixture. Three quarter teaspoon garlic. Half a teaspoon dry mustard. Jar two minutes on warm until the egg is thickened. Salt. Add the cheese. Four tablespoons cold butter. Has to be cold. It helps to emulsify the sauce. Oh yeah. Panko. Parsley, cause you're fancy. Okay, fine. Fine, you wanna make churros, no problem, but understand these are dangerous. Small pan, five tablespoons of butter in. One cup of water, two tablespoons of sugar. Heat on high heat. Make sure it's melted and bring to a boil. Turn off the heat. One teaspoon of vanilla, one teaspoon of fine sea salt. One cup all-purpose flour. Stir till thick with three C's. Now let this cool for eight to 10 minutes, brother. Three eggs, one at a time. Egg, mix, egg, I had to switch to a whisk. Egg, mix, and an egg yolk. Mix, one more time. Till nice and smooth. Transfer to a piping bag with a star tip. Heavy bottom pot. Fry oil. Filled a little over halfway. It's cinnamon sugar, not that hard. Three quarters of a cup of sugar. One and a half teaspoons of, well, cinnamon. <laughs> mix together. Heat to 375. Pipe five to six inch pieces. Snip. It's average churro size, okay? Repeat. Fry four to five minutes. Till golden brown and crispy. Remove from the oil, add the cinnamon sugar. Toss while still hot. Repeat with the rest. Now these are some good looking churros, but now we're talking. Look at I kept seeing this recipe for these five ingredient peanut butter cookies that looked way too good to be true, so I decided to try making them myself. I added one cup of brown sugar, one cup of creamy peanut butter, one large egg, one teaspoon of baking soda, and then half a cup of chocolate chips. I mixed it all together until the batter was smooth and there were no more clumps of brown sugar, and then I scooped out 12 cookies. If you don't have a fun cookie scoop like this, you can also roll out your cookie dough balls by hand. Be sure you're putting your cookies either on a parchment lined baking mat or on a silicone mat like this. Bake them at 350 degrees for about 9 minutes. And then when they're still piping hot and fresh out of the oven, press some chocolate chips on top of that and add a sprinkle of sea salt to really elevate the flavor of these cookies. I found they tasted best when they're still slightly warm and with an ice cold glass of milk. Safe to say I definitely approve of these cookies and my version of this recipe is up on shellsweets.com. For brunch, brioche stuffed french toast. First, the custard. Add one cup of cream, two tablespoons of brown sugar, almond or vanilla extract. Almond extract makes it taste like an almond cookie. Ground cinnamon. A loaf of brioche. Cut an inch and a half thick. Using a knife, create little pockets in each slice. You have two choices for your filling. Lemon curd and fresh regatta. It's really good. Or homemade strawberry jam and fresh regatta. I love the way the lemon curd tastes with the creamy regatta. Fill toast. Pour custard into a baking dish. Into the skillet, two tablespoons of butter over medium high heat. The brioche goes into the custard. Flip. Brioche bread absorbs quickly, so don't oversaturate your bread. The pan is nice and hot. In goes the brioche. Cook for two to three minutes, then flip. Sprinkle powdered sugar. Let me tell you a little secret. If you're buying buffalo wings, you're getting ripped off, bro. I think we should just make it. Two pounds of chicken wings, half a teaspoon of salt, half a tablespoon of garlic powder, and the secret ingredient, half a teaspoon of baking soda. Toss that together, half a teaspoon, <clears throat> half a tablespoon, <laughs> I can't, I can only do this so many times. Half a teaspoon, ah! half a tablespoon of olive oil. Baking sheet with a wire rack. Line your chicken wings up nicely. In the oven, 450 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 to 40 minutes. Small saucepan, three quarters of a cup Frank's Red Hot. On the stove, medium heat until steamy hot. Half a cup of butter in. Whiskey business. Buffalo sauce done. Crispy. Crispy in. Hit it with the buffalo. A little sauce. Just a finishing touch. Now we're talking that chicken leg piece with a ranch. You heard? It really is that easy. Here's how to make that famous whipped coffee at home. Start by adding two tablespoons of instant coffee to a bowl. Then two tablespoons of sugar, white or brown will all work. Then you wanna add two tablespoons of boiling hot water to the bowl. Then you're going to start whisking. We used a hand whisk for this. If you have an electric mixer, the process will be a lot quicker. Just set it to low and let it do the work. You'll have to whisk for about five minutes. 
Then you're going to want to add some ice to a cup with some almond milk and put the cream on top. It is delicious. And now you want to just mix it up and enjoy. Today we're making shrimp tacos for Taco Tuesday. Cook eight ounces of bacon at 425 until crispy. While that's cooking, slice a cabbage. You just need a quarter. Remove the core and slice into thin strips. Add that to a bowl. Roughly chop two cups of cilantro. Crumble the bacon. One piece never makes it in. Three tablespoons lime juice. Separate bowl, one pound shrimp, two tablespoons olive oil, half a teaspoon chipotle powder, half a teaspoon of cumin, and salt and pepper to taste. Give it a stir. Heat a pan on medium heat and cook the shrimp for one to two minutes on each side. Warm up tortillas, add the slaw, some avocado, shrimp, want to be extra, a little lime crema. Okay, look, I, I, I got Pizza the Hut before, I'll do it again. One cup of water, one and a half teaspoons of instant yeast, a little mixy mixy. Sit for five minutes. Two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of sugar, one and a quarter teaspoon of fine sea salt. Whiskey business. Add your yeasty water and mix. Take it a rough dough. Have a dual work surface. Let's keep kneading until nice and smooth. Medium bowl. A little of olive oil. Shape your dough into a ball, into your bowl. Plus wrap lightly oil. Cover. Rise at room temperature one to two hours. Italian tomatoes. Tomato. Two cloves of garlic. Two tablespoons of olive oil. Salt to taste. A pinch of sugar. Blend. Tell nice and smooth. Pizza stone. Into the oven. 500 Fahrenheit. It's 45 minutes. Baking sheet. Dust generously with flour. Any flour. Dump out your dough. Divide. Two even pieces. And shape. Into a ball. Onto your sheet. Cover and rest. 30 minutes. Pizza peel with flour. Piece of dough. Flour on the top. Punch around the perimeter. Over the knuckles. Turn, stretch, turn, stretch. Little pizza sauce. Spread it out. And cheese. Pepperoni. Into the oven on the five minutes. Grill two minutes. Garlic oil on the crusty. Ooh wee. Don't you dare throw those away. We're making the best banana bread. I can't stress it enough. Measure like this. Sweet. Best way to measure. One and a half cups all purpose flour. One teaspoon baking soda. Half a teaspoon kosher salt. Three quarter cup unsalted butter. Make sure the butter softened, not melted. One cup packed light brown sugar. Cream, medium speed, two minutes. Two eggs. One teaspoon vanilla. Ripe bananas. The batter's gonna curdle. Don't do you worry. Funnel in the flour, low speed until combined. That way you don't make a mess. Spray nine by five loaf pan. 45 minutes to one hour. Oh yeah. Ham and cheese sandwich. You need bread. Two slices. Fancy mustard. Mustard on. Both sides. Monterey Jack cheese. Cheddar. A piece of Moonster. Pickles. Ham. On. Top. Softened butter. Both sides. Into a pan. On the stove. Medium heat. Flip. Into quick beat. Toast the other side. Brother. Oh yeah. Ham and cheese, baby. Whoo, shit. Not right there. At me with your ham and cheese. Oh, you like plain popcorn? No. Salted caramel corn. Half a cup of butter. One cup of brown sugar. Quarter cup of maple syrup. One and a half teaspoons of salt. Three quarts of popcorn. Unsalted and freshly popped. Onto the stove. A little over medium heat. Now bring that up while constantly stirring. Look how smooth. Lightly boil that. Stirring occasionally for four minutes. Stir in two teaspoons of vanilla extract. 30 more seconds. Then half a teaspoon of baking powder. Pour that over your popcorn. Fold that together. Ah, really hot. <laughs> Be careful! Spread onto a baking sheet. Spread it out nicely. Now look, you could eat it now, but we're gonna make it crispy. Into the oven at 250 Fahrenheit. 30 minutes. Stir it occasionally. Take it out of the oven. Let it cool. Now that right there. Listen carefully. That is salted caramel corn. Craving an Egg McMuffin, but you don't want to hit the drive-thru? I'm gonna show you how to make an Egg McMuffin in two minutes. What you'll need, a mug, an egg, Canadian bacon, English muffin, butter, salt and pepper, and a half a cup of water. Butter your English muffin with butter or compound butter. Head to my grilled cheese recipe to see how to make a compound butter. Toast your muffin in a pan. Cut your Canadian bacon to fit your mug. Place your bacon in the bottom of the mug. Into the microwave. 
for 30 seconds. Remove the bacon and place it on the muffin. Do not clean the mug. Instead, pour the half a cup of water into the mug. Gently slide that egg into the mug. Then back into the microwave for one minute. Scoop egg out of the water. Place on your egg McMuggin. Add salt, pepper, chives, cheese, cover. Give it a shot. Tell me how it goes. Okay, so you're at... Y'all are asking for fried chicken, but you didn't say which kind. I think we should do something special. Start with some chicken breast. Put that in a layer of plastic wrap. Chicken. Another layer of plastic wrap. Eat that bit. Half an inch thick. Repeat with all your chicken. Season both sides with salt. In three, in three separate containers. Three eggs. Splash of water. With a whisk. Whiskey business. Two cups of all-purpose flour. Two cups of panko breadcrumbs. Welcome to the breading station. Both sides in flour. Shake up excess. Then the egg. Both sides, obviously. And then, cook well in panko. Look at that. Repeat with the rest. Deep skillet. High heat oil. About half an inch deep. Pan stove. A little over medium heat. Until the oil is hot or about 350 Fahrenheit. Carefully lay away from you. Fry that. For three to four minutes. Flip and fry another. Two to four minutes. The wire rack. Now that is a crispy. Katsu sauce. That's looking about right, but I think we need a little extra. Oh yeah, we got the sauce. Yes, sir. <laughs> Spice, heat, sweet. We're making Jamaican jerk steak. Grab your habaneros. Stemmed habaneros. One third cup olive oil. Blend until chunky smooth. Pour into a bowl. One third cup packed light brown sugar. Two teaspoons garlic powder. Two teaspoon allspice. Two teaspoon cinnamon. Half a teaspoon ground cloves. Half of a teaspoon freshly grated nutmeg. Mix, forming a paste. Two three quarter pound skirt steak. Can also use flank flat iron or hanger. Slather the paste over the steaks. Cover, marinate two to four hours in the refrigerator. Heat over medium. Remove the steaks to room temperature, 15 minutes. Salt, pepper, oil grill grate. Grill two to three minutes each side. Let it rest 10 minutes. Today we're making coconut curry chicken, which is a fast and flavorful weeknight meal. Dice one onion and dice one red bell pepper. Dice up three chicken breasts. Heat a pan on medium heat and add some oil. Add the onion and bell pepper. Three cloves of garlic. Saute for three to four minutes. Add the chicken, two tablespoons curry powder, one teaspoon ginger powder, and cook for five to seven minutes or until the chicken is cooked through. Add one can of full fat coconut milk, the juice of one lime, and simmer another five minutes. Cook some rice, add that to a plate, top it with the coconut curry chicken. Always drizzle a little more sauce and top with cilantro. Chia pudding is one of the easiest healthy snack and breakfast options. So let me show you how to make it. Two teaspoons of chia seeds, half a cup of dairy or dairy-free milk, one teaspoon maple syrup, half a teaspoon of vanilla, and stir that all together. Let this sit for 10 minutes. It will start to thicken and then we'll stir it again. And then cover and place this in the fridge for an hour. It's nice and thick and you can eat it plain or add toppings. Add the strawberry puree, chia pudding, and some berries and almonds. And dig in. Hash browns are for wimps. You can do better. We're making a potato galette. It's French. Peel one large potato. Cheesecloth. Great. Twist and ring. Ring out the excess moisture. Heat eight inch skillet, medium low heat. Add two to three tablespoons canola oil, peanut oil, or leftover bacon fat. Add half of the potato. Freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano. Remaining potato on top. Salt. Cook five to six minutes until golden on the bottom. Turn up the heat to medium to make sure it's nice and golden. One to two minutes. See how it's nicely golden around the edges? It's time to flip. Flip. Add a little more oil so it doesn't burn. Cook medium low heat five to six more minutes. Salt, pepper, parsley, parmigiano Reggiano, dill. Oh yeah. Today we're making some chocolate chip muffins. 
First, we're mixing together the dry ingredients, which include one cup of all-purpose flour, a third of a cup granulated sugar, one and two-thirds of a teaspoon baking powder, and a pinch of salt. Then, for our wet ingredients, we're adding a third of a cup whole milk or buttermilk, two tablespoons of sour cream, six tablespoons of vegetable oil, one teaspoon of vanilla, and one large egg. We're whisking those together until all those ingredients are super smooth, and then it's time to pour our dry ingredients into our wet. We're folding this together with a rubber spatula and mixing just until you can't see any more bits of flour. Then we're folding in two-thirds of a cup of chopped chocolate that's been tossed with one teaspoon of flour to prevent them from sinking to the bottom of our muffins as they bake. I'm filling six muffin tins with our batter and dividing it evenly, then adding a bit of extra chocolate and some extra sanding sugar to the top of our muffins so that they come out super pretty and have deliciously crunchy tops. I bake them at 425 degrees for 6 minutes and then lower the temperature to 350 degrees and bake for an additional 22 to 25 minutes to give them a crunchy top and a super fluffy inside. And while the inside is delicious, I think we all know that the muffin top is the very best part. Today we're making grilled chicken gyros, not gyros, gyros. It's Greek. One and a half pound boneless skinless chicken breast. Pound the hump so it cooks evenly. Third cup olive oil. Grate two garlic cloves. Grated zest of one lemon. Marinate up to four hours in the refrigerator. Now we make tzatziki. One garlic clove, grated. One tablespoon lemon juice. It mellows the garlic. Seven ounces Greek yogurt. One third English cucumber. Peel, remove the seeds. Grate, dash of cayenne, pinch of salt, stir. Two tablespoons chopped dill. Five, pocket of pita, wrap and foil. 350 degrees, 15 minutes. Heat grill over medium heat. Salt, pepper. Oil grates. Grill four to five minutes each side. Remove to rest, eight minutes. Slice. Today we're making these super easy seven ingredient oatmeal lace cookies. They're one of my favorite and they're absolutely delicious. We're adding two and a quarter cups of light brown sugar and one cup of unsalted butter into a saucepan and we're heating that over a medium heat until all the butter melts down and the sugar is dissolved. To that mixture we're adding one teaspoon of salt, three tablespoons of all-purpose flour, and then two and a quarter cups of quick oats. We're giving that a quick stir to make sure all those oats are coated and then we're adding in one teaspoon of vanilla and one large egg. Once our mixture is ready we're adding just a teaspoon of batter onto our baking mat and we're going to bake these at 375 degrees for about five minutes. This recipe makes a ton of cookies but they're also irresistible so it's kind of a good thing. They have crispy edges and chewy centers and they're so yummy. The recipe is up on shellsweets.com. The secret to crispy, juicy roasted chicken and my recipe for chicken gremolata. Take your chicken thighs. Step one, trim excess skin. Step two, pat your thighs dry with paper towels. Step three, generously salt both sides of your thighs. Now into the fridge overnight or for at least four hours so the salt can extract all the moisture from the skin. Now we brush the thighs with canola oil or grapeseed oil, which has a lower smoking point than olive oil. Into the oven at 425 for about 35 minutes. While chicken cooks, we make the gremolata. Into food processor, three cloves of garlic. Hold till minced. Add parsley and olive oil, salt, lemon juice, Pulse about 10 times. Perfect. Out of the oven, your chicken should look like this and have a temperature of over 165. Drizzle the beautiful parsley gremolata. Oh my gosh, that looks so good.